Life by Divine with Sue DeMay fosters deep healing and profound awakenings as she guides you to hear, answer, and trust the highest calling of your heart. Your host and sacred guide is global impact visionary leader Sue DeMay, a best-selling author, international speaker, and gifted intuitive healer who challenges all of us to shift from life by default or even life by design to truly living life by divine. And now, here is Sue DeMay. Welcome to the show and thank you for tuning in today. I'm excited to be here with you today to share a really mm, important message, but a really a message that's really close to my heart. And I know there's a lot of people that are that are really struggling with grief and loss. And I want to invite you to understand grief and loss a little bit on a deeper level, on an emotional level, on a mental level, on a spiritual level, on a soul level. When we have a, a more broader perspective or understanding of grief and loss, it allows us to move through it with a little bit more ease and grace. Doesn't mean it becomes easy, but there's a sense of ease and grace. There's a, a deep acceptance, there's a deep surrender that can occur, that can allow us to move through it with not as much density, not as much heaviness, and, and it may even allow the process to occur a little quicker. And I'm not trying to rush people through grief and loss. It's a process that is very different for each individual. And there's stages to it. I'm not going to talk about the stages of grief. There's a lot of resources you can find around that. But what I really want to touch on today is helping you understand it's just part of our human nature. It's part of our humanness. And embracing our humanness means we will feel um, a scale of different emotions, an array of different human emotions. When we understand the, the emotions and how they're meant to move energetically, and then we can marry our mind and our, our mental understanding of the emotions and the energy of the emotions, then we're actually able to move through them with, with grace. So today I'll be talking about grief and loss and extraordinary joy. Now I know you might be asking what those three things have in common, or the two obviously, grief and loss, you can see what they have in common, but what does joy have to do with grief and loss? I'll explain that today. I'm gonna to talk about the emotional scale, I'm gonna talk about the process of grieving and giving yourself permission to embrace your humanness around that. And at the same time, be open to embodying your divinity, but also the divinity of the individual or the one that you're grieving. With all letting go, there's a sense of loss. And it doesn't even, it doesn't necessarily mean we need to look at loss in the way of an individual or a pet. Loss can be ex experienced when we are letting go of a job, letting go of a project, letting go of a friendship, just letting go of anything in our lives, even letting go of something like, you know, going through your closet and letting go of some clutter, letting go of sentimental value items, letting go of something that's no longer serving. In all letting go on a human level, there's a sense of loss. And when we give ourselves permission to feel that loss, to experience that grief, and to allow that emotional density to rise, to be felt, to be honored, and be cleared, 
then we can move through the process of grief. The challenge is when we judge or when we deny or when we swallow down or when we hold back, then we stay stuck a little bit longer. We get caught up in, in the grief cycle. We get caught up in the energy of loss and it sticks around. So it's almost like choking it off a little bit and, and keeping it there a little longer than it needs to. I've talked about this a lot. I've talked about our emotions being energy in motion. And our emotions need to be felt and experienced in order to be cleared. Emotions are energy in motion. And when we allow the expression of the emotion, we allow the energy to move. When we allow the energy to move, the expression of that energy allows us to feel it, experience it, and release it. The challenge is that's not what we're taught in life. We're taught to hold on to things. We're taught programmed to, to dwell on things. We're programmed to, to sit and camp out in those, especially the heavier emotions, longer than we need to. And then coupled with that, we're taught to really analyze and get into our head around these things, which keeps us even more stuck in them. So today I want to invite you to explore the topic of grief and loss with me and extraordinary joy and be open to the idea that those three things can be in a space all together all at once or that you could move from one to the other in the process of grief and loss, that there's space for extraordinary joy. I'm going to share a little story about my experience. So this last week, we came home from Turks and Caicos, and shortly after coming home, we recognized that our horse, Samson, was not doing very well. And he's been... He's been in pain for a while. He's had an injury that he's not recovering from. He has a pelvis injury that he had several months ago, probably about six months ago. And we also recognize he has arthritis. And then he also has a mass. He had a tumor. And at the time, six or seven months ago, we decided after a vet visit, that we need to just keep him comfortable and keep him on paddock rest and to, to see how he does and keep him on medication and, and supplements that help relieve his pain. And he was doing well for quite a while, well enough. He, he would hold his leg up. He would tend, you know, he basically kind of limp on that leg and every once in a while he'd, he'd look better one day and then a little bit more uncomfortable the next day. But he was managing and he was bright and he was happy and he was eating and, and he just, his spirit was really strong. And I knew in my heart he was still went wanting to stay. So I went away to Turks and Caicos. I was away for two months. And then my husband and my kids came down and they were gone for two weeks. And my husband and Samson are very, very close. And they have a really strong connection as do I with Samson, but they have a real special bond. Samson's one of those horses that he just, he loves to love people and he loves to be loved. He's just a love bug. And he is one of those horses that will make friends with anyone, anything at any time. I, I said the other day to my husband, I'm like, Samson would make friends with a bee. Like, you know, he's just... He's just such a beautiful spirit and such a loving presence. I remember the first time I met Samson. We, I was walking through the pasture with the other horses and he started following me. And normally horses will definitely follow you if you have treats in your pocket, if you're holding an apple or if they know you've got something in your pocket. 
that they are looking for. But he just was following me just for the sake of being with me. He was really curious. He was really intrigued. And he just wanted to be with people. He just wants to be with other horses. He just wants to be with anyone at any time. He even made friends with the cow that we have on the property. Him and Carmel are, are good buds. We're good buds. He is just one of those horses. So when we came back, I heard, I hadn't gone to the barn yet, but um, my husband had told me that he'd been there and was talking to the others that have been taking care of Samson and the other horses and the other animals while the time, by the time, for the two weeks we were gone. And he had said that Samson had lost a lot of weight in the two weeks that my husband was gone and he was getting weak and that it might be time to say goodbye. So the next morning I went out to see him and he was lying down in his paddock and the moment I saw him, I just like tears were streaming down my face like someone turned on a faucet and I just started crying and I knelt down beside him and he just looked so tired and weathered and weak. And it broke my heart because he's such a strong spirited horse and I couldn't feel his spirit. His spirit was really heavy. So I sat there crying with him for about 10 minutes and then he made a motion to get up. So I stood back because he's a big Belgian draft horse and I know he was weak, so I wanted to give him space to get up. And he just got up in one fail swoop. Like, he, I don't know how he did it. He just whoop, he got up and he came over and he started doing his whole lip nuggling thing. And he does this lip thing where he puts it on my hand and it's like these kisses, these horse kisses. And as he was walking, I could see just how much weight he had lost, but not just in his back end where his pelvis is leg that's that's injured his pelvis side that's injured that leg was already kind of losing muscle mass but his other legs actually had lost muscle mass and he was definitely weak after lying down trying to walk around and it took him a little while to kind of get his legs back underneath him and i could really feel it in my heart that he was struggling so i don't know if any of you have had the the situation where you needed to decide for a pet that it was time to let them go. I used to work at a veterinary hospital. I was a veterinary technician and I worked as a manager as well at a hospital for a long time. And so I've, I've had my share of pets and I've just supported my share of pets in, in letting them go in that and supporting that transition for them, my own pets, but also hundreds of others and it's such a sacred time that precious saying goodbye and in the past with other animals my own animals I found it challenging but I could still move through it with Samson it was extra challenging with Samson it was it was the hardest goodbye I ever had to say and it made me realize that he represents so much he represented so much for me in my life and really the lesson that I learned from him and I continue to learn from him is to love without limits to love without condition and when I said earlier that Samson can make friends with anything i'm i was serious like he could make friends with a bug he would make friends like the cow the other day was the two of them were were hanging out and and the cow was licking sam's bucket as he was eating and he just didn't care he was just like go ahead it's like so he's just such a beautiful living breathing example of love extending love and receiving love and just beaming love. He's a, he was a basically a lighthouse of love. 
So as we spent the weekend with him, I didn't want to, you know, make the decision right away. I, I needed, we need, we all needed to have that time with him and spend that time with him. We really took the time to honor him, to honor his process, to honor his life, to honor our connection, to, to really love on him. There was lots of apples. There was lots of carrots. There was lots of brushing and, and attention. There was lots of kisses. And it was such a beautiful time and connection. And he really shifted in his, in his spirit. I know that his spirit was ready to say goodbye, but at the same time, his spirit lifted with the love that we were extending toward him and the, the time we were spending toward him. I could tell that he really appreciated it. And at the same time, the other horses and the cow and all the other animals on the farm, including the cat, were also really honoring him. It was such a beautiful experience to witness from a more conscious level and understanding of, of grief and loss and letting go and relationship with animal to animal, but human to animal as well. Animals are animals in nature have a, a way of actually connecting us to the truth of who we are, which is love. And they have a way of helping us remember our oneness. I call it living oneness. Animals have a way of living oneness. And they remind us of our living oneness. As we had this beautiful time with Samson this weekend, there was a real heavy, dense feeling of loss and grief. And I'm still feeling it now as I'm talking about it again. So it still feels a little bit fresh, but I, I really felt it was important for me to share this message and share this story because I know a lot of people right now are, are grieving whether they've lost a loved one or an animal or just feel a sense of loss for what's going on on a global scale, there's a real letting go of the old to create space for a new paradigm, a new way of being in life, a new way of, of a, a new shift for humanity. And in that, in that letting go, there's still going to be a sense of loss, even though it's essential, even though it's necessary, even though it's become non-negotiable for that shift to occur on a level of, for all of humanity, there's still a sense of loss. That's, that's our humanness. That's, that's embracing our humanness and allowing the emotions to have space, honoring them, witnessing them, creating space for them so that we don't swallow them down so that we don't bury them. And in fact, it's really challenging to bury them now. We, we used to be able to do that a lot easier, but now it's actually, it's, it's kind of non-negotiable too. We, we need to feel these emotions. We need to allow the emotions to have their expression. So over the weekend and, and the days that pass up until the day we said goodbye, I, found myself suddenly in the middle of doing something completely unrelated, just crying. And I'd stop and really honor the tears and honor my process and give myself permission to feel it. And then it would kind of, as it came like a wave, it kind of left like a wave. And then I'd go on with what I was doing and, and suddenly another wave of grief and loss would come and I would feel it and I would allow it and I would give space for it. Even while I was, you know, out grocery shopping or driving, I would just, if there were tears, I would let the tears as long as I could safely drive it. I wasn't crying that much, but just tears pouring down my cheeks like, like someone had turned on a faucet. And that feeling and that density and that heaviness of grief in my heart, just honoring and creating space for that. And, and when I did, each time it was like, a wave would rise and release. And then another wave would come. So grief is much like that, where you know we, we feel a layer, and when we really feel it fully and allow it and give it space, honor it, then we actually can release it. 
and then the next wave comes and then the next wave comes and then the next wave comes and sometimes it feels constant because it's as one layer releases another layer instantly takes that space it takes up that space so it feels a constant but it is actually coming in waves and as long as we're not choking it down or holding it in then we allow that wave and that emotion to rise and be expressed and be released so as it moves through us for the expression then it actually is released when we look at grief and loss and we allow space for it it doesn't mean that we can get over it in a couple days sometimes for some individuals depending on the situation we're grieving it can be years or longer it can be a lifetime sometimes and i know for me when i look back at my losing my father when he was 53 i had i, I had the honor of actually being with him and and holding his hand and saying goodbye as he took his last breath and for me that was really really important but it also felt like a a beautiful witnessing of him letting go of his physical body and as challenging as it was there was a lot of relief because he was in a lot of physical pain and when he let go there was a sense of relief as well as a sense of loss and if i would have allowed if i would have judged that then the judgment and the guilt of of feeling that way could have held my grief in longer so allowing again those different emotions to rise and fall and allow them to have their process allowed me to move through it with a little bit more grace and ease over the years so this is 2001 that he passed away so over the years i've really felt a heart connection to him he comes in my dreams and sends me messages in different ways he shows up as hummingbirds in my life and hummingbirds will come and flutter like in front of me and then and right and you know kind of fly up and then fly down they do funny little dances in front of me and stuff and that's that's his way of saying hello i'm here and connecting with me so he uses nature to continue to connect with me but i also am very open to connecting with his spirit so there is a sense of loss and grief for the physical relationship as a human being human to human and then there's an opening in my heart for that soul to human experience that connection to his spirit once he let go of the physical body the grieving process for me and my father ha from around my father has been long and and for the most part i feel appreciation gratitude and a connection with him at this time but in the earlier years i would have waves of grief now other people who have maybe lost a loved one in 2001 or even around that time may be feeling real dense layers of grief that continue so again i just want to honor everybody's grieving process is very different and depending on the relationship and depending on the connection you can feel to them in spirit once they've passed the physical form on and let go of the physical body it's not always easy to feel that spiritual connection but sometimes the physical hanging on or the the grief on a human level is different so i just want to honor that and and there's no right or wrong way to grieve it's really important to recognize that there's no right or wrong way to grieve and whatever way you're grieving for whatever relationship or whatever situation you're grieving is i give you full permission just to be with the emotions and allow the waves and allow them to ebb and flow and allow them to come and go and create some space and honor them sometimes there's a real loyalty that comes in around grief and loss and we feel this loyalty to having to grieve longer or to grieve heavier or to hold on to the pain longer and the suffering longer as a way of honoring that person or showing how much we love them and you don't need to do that 
I'm just giving you permission not to be loyal to grief. Don't be loyal to loss. Loyalty comes from guilt, fear, and obligation. And loyalty doesn't serve anyone or anything, and it certainly won't serve you, and it will not actually mm, honor that individual. Loyalty is fear, guilt, and obligation. And I talk about loyalty. I've done different episodes on loyalty. There's a whole chapter um, in my book, Stand Up, Stand Out, Stand Strong, about stop being loyal. Loyalty is one of those programming, my mental programmings that hold us in fear and keep us in guilt and obligation and keep us stuck in those denser emotions longer than we need to. So when you shift from loyalty to honoring, you can actually honor the individual, honor the loss, the grief. You can honor the emotions that you're feeling. You can honor the situation. You can honor the relationship you had. You can honor what they taught you and, and the new relationship that would be in spirit with them. Honoring actually opens up the door for so much more. Loyalty keeps us stuck in guilt and obligation. And loyalty actually really keeps us stuck in, in grief longer than we need to. Or it slows down our processing of the grief. So very important to shift from loyalty to honoring. And that's really a choice in the mind first and then a feeling in the heart. So if I were to honor Samson, as I, as I do that, even right now, actually I feel his spirit really strong and expanded. And I feel him, he's like right in my heart. He has a way of actually, in life and in spirit, he has a way of niggling right into your heart and, and hanging out there. And he's really, he just is such a special, he's just such a special horse. And he is, he was here and he's here. He continues to be here in spirit to teach me and others how to love without limits how to love without condition. And to meet everyone with curiosity and, and be, be open to following them around and figuring out who they are and discovering why they're here and what their purpose is and, and how they're meant to impact your life or how you're meant to impact their life. That, those are the things I learned from him. And I honor him by taking those things into my heart and into my life and continuing to let his spirit live on through me. When we look at saying goodbye, letting go, there's that physical experience, the human experience of letting go, the physical form. So when we had the vet appointment and the vet came and before that happened, the day my husband took the afternoon off, we spent the afternoon with Samson and brushing him and, and taking care of him and feeding him apples and carrots and just really honoring him and, and a real heart-to-heart -heart connections with him. So at one point, my husband, because he, he has the, the sore leg was on the right side, his back leg, and his whole back hip was... He had lost a lot of muscle mass and he would bring his leg forward and straighten it and place it down just gently to try and find some comfort in his hips. So at one point, my husband lifted up his, his leg because he would actually hold it up every once in a while to try and give himself some relief. So he had his, his leg kind of forward and then he was trying to hold it up. So my husband went beside him and, and held his leg. And I'm going to get a little emotional when I tell this this part because it was such for me to witness that was such um it was so precious because as my husband was holding on to samson's leg and giving him that loving support he just like did it just because his heart like he just felt it in his heart that he was going to do it samson's whole body relaxed and his eyes softened and i could just feel his pain like just like left his body for a moment and he was just like feeling so loved and so supported. These precious little moments we had with him 
I, I've learned so much. Like these are powerful lessons. And I could have stayed stuck in my head and judging, you know, and asking why and why Sam and, you know, why is it this? Why is it his time? And why does he have to be in such pain? And why can't he recover? I could have been in my head about it, but I was just really in my heart with the experience and allowing the tears and allowing the waves of grief to come and allowing myself and giving myself permission to feel sad. I felt so deeply sad and I still do. I still have waves of it. And in giving myself permission to really feel it fully, I was able to move through it with grace. It was challenging. It's still challenging. It's still fresh. It's still raw. It was only a week ago. But I really feel it's important for me to share this message so that you can find a different way to move through grief and loss. Now, whether it's fresh and raw and new for you right now, or whether it's grief that's been around for a while and lingering, or whether it's a long-term sense of loss, honor it. Just be with it and honor it. Honor those emotions. Give yourself some space. Give yourself permission just to feel it and be okay with feeling it. Don't analyze it. Don't try and figure it out. Don't try and understand it. Grief and loss is not really um, mental, a, a thing we can process mentally and understand. It's emotions and energy that need to be expressed and felt and released. So giving yourself permission just to move through it in your way, in the way that you need to in that moment. And for us, it was about spending the weekend with Samson and honoring him in different ways and really being with him and, and showing him how much he means to us and how much love we have for him and, and receiving his love for us. So a couple hours before the vet came, we took him out to pasture. So he has been on paddock rest for, for months. So normally he's the type of horse that would be out in pasture and eating grass and out with the other horses. And if you came, you know, to the barn and, and showed up, he would come running and he, he would just come running with this like unbridled enthusiasm to see you. And, and it's like, there you are. And he just run across the field and he'd like run really fast. And then he'd like stop right in front of you. And it's like, just like to say hello. And, and I loved seeing him do that. And of course, since his injury and, and his pain, he hasn't been able to do that. So when we took him out to pasture, he got a little excited. We tried to keep him calm because of course his, his hip, we didn't want it to get worse while he was there i wanted to enjoy i wanted him to enjoy the grass and enjoy the time and so he started eating the grass right away he's quite excited about that and then he we let him off the, the harness and he was just walking around slowly grazing on the grass and suddenly he started sniffing and you can always tell when a horse is about to roll and i said to my husband is he gonna roll and he's like i think so so i took my camera out and i videotaped him and I just videotaped him rolling and he just looked so playful and he had such joy and like extraordinary joy. I could just feel his, his spirit expanded just in like being on the grass and being in the pasture. And, and he was, he was really like just in this beautiful celebration, energy of celebration so he was rolling and rolling and watching him and then he stopped and he just started eating grass so he's lying down and eating grass and i had a thought for a moment i'm like i don't know if he's going to be able to get himself back up because that's a lot of energy and so i let him have you know his time and and eat his grass and then i stopped the video and i was just really honoring him and 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 loving him and then he found his way up not as graceful <laughs> as he did the last time I saw him get up, but he found his way back up and then he spent the last two hours, the next two hours on pasture, eating grass and, and really enjoying himself. And at the time when the vet came, it's like he knew, he knew and we knew that it was time to say goodbye. So as after all of that, I started walking back to the house so that our barn is actually quite a distance from our home. So it's about a quarter mile down the driveway. So 
I was walking back by myself. My husband stayed in the barn and I just had to go back. And I had tears going as I was walking back to the barn. And and the grief was so fresh and intense that I, I really wanted to feel his spirit because I know he's meant to be a guardian angel uh, for me, with me. And I wanted to feel his spirit, but it was really challenging because on a human level, I was still feeling the grief and loss of his physical form and his physical body and that physical connection. So it was challenging for me to feel his spirit, but I was open to it. So I suddenly felt a glimpse of his energy and I could suddenly feel him walking beside me. And I'm like, oh, there you are. And then I saw him like beeline it for the other field and he went running like his spirit was free and he was just running and I could see him running and his mane was just flowing in the wind and he was just so happy and so free and his body was supporting him and and he just he was in such joy that it brought joy to my heart just for a moment though it was a glimpse of joy and then the heaviness came back and the grief and the sadness came back and I honored that and gave space for that and I was okay with that and I knew that I would shift from that human heaviness that human density of grief and loss I knew I would shift into joy again because that's he's he's teaching unbridled enthusiasm extraordinary joy that's that's what he represents along with love so I knew I would get back to that but I gave myself permission just to be sad just to be in the grief for longer so the next day, I felt really heavy and really blah. And again, gave myself space for that. And of all the animals I said goodbye, I know I mentioned this earlier, of all the animals I said goodbye to over the years, all the animals that I've assisted and helped at the end of their life, this one with Samson was the hardest. It really was on a human level the hardest. And... I acknowledged that and I talked to my husband about that too and he uh, agreed it was it was really really hard for him too and they had such a special bond in uh, um, human to animal form so in meditation that next morning I was uh, his spirit came in and I could feel his presence and I and I said to him like I'm open to the lessons you can continue to teach me in spirit and he came in to my meditation and brought his nose right to my heart space and literally his nose went into my heart space it wasn't just like in obviously in human form he would touch his nose to my my chest he, his nose actually went into my heart space and he said and the message i got is like keep your heart wide open and of course that just created a huge layer of emotions to wash up again and I could feel the density in my heart rising and clearing as the tears rose up and I could feel his spirit really expanding around me and I could feel the connection in of his spirit with with my heart and that shifted some more of my grief and then it wasn't until the next day that I had a shift in my own energy that was my birthday last Thursday I had a shift in my own energy and I was playing the ego game of opposites and I discovered um, a dictionary definition of my birthday and the opposite, the word that the ego was playing against my birthday was celebration. So both those ego definitions were crazy making and insanely skewed and, and fear-based and, and needed to be reprogrammed. And the minute I, the moment I reprogrammed them, the new words that came in is celebrate my birthday, the day of my birth. And it just came in as extraordinary celebration and miracles. And it just had a beautiful perspective. And I was, I was really, shit, I shifted instantly from feeling blah and this real intense grief and loss to extraordinary joy and celebration the energy of celebration i went from having no plans on my birthday to uh, booking a hair appointment to get because i've been three or four months since i'd had my hair cut and hair done i booked a hair appointment i went out and bought a new purse because my purse was breaking and i was that was i just wasn't buying a new purse i wasn't honoring myself i wasn't celebrating myself so it felt really good to celebrate 
and honor my birthday, but also celebrate and honor Samson at the same time. I felt like I suddenly felt his presence in my heart. It was like in physical form, he's a big, massive draft horse, right? So he's like 2,000 pounds. He's a big guy, big, huge hoofs. He's a big, big horse. And he, in his spirit, it's he, he's even bigger. So his spirit is even bigger. So his spirit came into my heart and expanded. And I felt like it, it took up my heart space beyond my heart space. He's literally like in my heart and, and beyond my physical form. His spirit is so expansive, but he's really right in there in the heart space for me. And he's not going anywhere. That's his space. And that's, he's going to keep it open no matter what happens. So that day, I, then the day before I felt so blah and so heavy, but that day I felt so light and so expansive and such joy and celebration. And I could actually really authentically feel it. And I felt a level of joy I have not felt ever, or maybe in a very, very long time. I don't remember ever feeling that level of extraordinary joy. And I know it was partly his doing. It was partly him from the other side saying, okay, let me teach you this. Let me teach you how to feel this. And let me remind you of the truth of who you are, which is that love that where joy just naturally arises. So such powerful lessons and such beautiful gifts that came from a really challenging human experience. And I'm inviting you to recognize that all of our human experiences have powerful lessons to teach us. Our life is our classroom for healing. Our life is our classroom for awakening to the truth of who we are and remembering the truth of who we are. It requires us unprogramming, unlearning, unwinding the mind and the fear-based programming that we hold to remember and open our hearts and soften our hearts and let love in. Let grief move through us. Let loss move through us. Let sadness, let anger, let resentment, any of those emotions, they're just human emotions. They're just energy that need a level of expression. And when we honor and allow those emotions to move through us, we can actually experience extraordinary joy. It was interesting to experience such a contrast of grief and sadness to extraordinary joy. And it was such a beautiful gift for me because the reflection since then has been the mirror reflection of other people and my experiences around has been unbelievable it's been full of miracles and i'm and i'm so grateful samson has taught me so much and continues to teach me so much so when we recognize that grief and loss has different perspectives we can hold the perspective on a human level of what we're losing we can trust and walk with blind faith, knowing that if it's on our path, it's purposeful. It's purposeful for the evolution of our spirit. It's purposeful for the healing of our human self and the awakening of our, our spiritual self. When we recognize that, that everything that's on our path is purposeful and then there's a lesson and there's something in it that's, that it's meant to teach us, then it gives us a broader perspective and we can not camp out so much in, in the heaviness of the human experiences, and we can allow those the heavy ex human experiences to actually shift and move through us and it be expressed in ways that allow us to really shift mm, at the same time honor those emotions and open up space for another perspective. So every time we lose someone on a physical level, their spirit moves on, their spirit lives on. And I connect with spirits all the time. I have a way of communicating with them and bridging that physical and the non-physical for people. I help people get messages from their loved ones that have passed and animals that have passed. And it was challenging for me at first to get the connection and, and going with, with, with Samson because it was so close to my human heart 
And I had to allow myself to have those human experiences before I could shift back into remembering that there's more to this than the physical form. We have a spiritual soul connection to everything and everyone, everywhere, all together, all at once. That's living oneness. We don't always experience that because we believe we're separate bodies having these separate experiences. But when we can actually just have these moments of connection with a non-physical spiritual being, it helps us remember the truth that we are all one, that we all come from the same source. And that, yes, we're having these human experiences and we're having these physical expressions of our human selves here on this, on this earth for a reason, but on a soul level, we're all connected. And that might be a little bit of a stretch for, for some of your minds, and that's okay. I'm just trying it on. Try it on. I remember when, in the beginning, when my husband and I first started dating, and I was talking about, you know, ghosts, and, and he's like, I don't believe in ghosts, and he's like, I don't believe in spirits, and I don't believe in God, and he just has this really, kind of, this is who, this is what I believe, and I'm like, okay, and this is what I believe, and we really honor each other and, and respect each other, and for, the, for a while, we've been watching Hollywood medium, Tyler Henry's Hollywood medium, and he's a, a medium that connects people with their with their loved ones had a past so he's been curious about the show because i've been really interested in it and he's been curious about it so he's watched it with me and interestingly when i was away for two months i came back and we had the hollywood medium had recorded so i'm like oh do you want to watch that the one night we were sitting down watching tv and i'm like do you want to watch hollywood medium he's like sure so then i put on the show the, the first one that i missed and it started playing. And he's like, you might want to go to the, the very last one. And I'm like, I looked at him like, were you watching it when I was gone? He's like, maybe. So it was such a, a precious moment for me because I'm like, wow, he's actually shifting into opening his mind to the idea that there's life after our physical body lets go. And he's opening to the idea of connecting to spirits. And it was just really such a precious moment. And I was like so excited because it just created another opportunity for us to really come on the same page in, in that way. So him being open and curious about life after the physical body, it was, uh, it was a miracle. It was totally a miracle. So I was really excited about that. So we'll see where it goes, but at this point, I, I'm definitely celebrating it for what it is. So when we open our minds to connect to those that have passed, animals or human, we can actually experience a relationship with them after the physical. And it allows us to really feel a heart and soul connection to them. Spirits have a way of connecting with us, whether it's a symbol in life. So I know I talked about my, my father coming in as a hummingbird. My grandfather also does that too. I remember, and actually a little girl that I had a miscarriage with in 2001, same year my, my father passed away. I at one point after my grandfather passed away, so the three of them would come in, in hummingbirds was my feeling. And one day I was talking about my grandfather and this hummingbird came and literally was buzzing at my front window and like staring at me, just sitting there staring at me, facing me in this big window. And then two others came and buzzed around. So it was like the three of them there all together. And I was just like, my heart just expanded and tears came to my eyes and feeling this connection with them knowing that, that they're all around me in spirit and that they have these beautiful symbols that come in. And I know other clients have said, oh, they've, you know, they'll find dimes as a symbol or feathers as a symbol. Uh, one of my clients, two of my clients actually, they had a, this same friend and, and there's a connection every time they see a sunflower or an eagle, they remember this one friend that they had in, in and they feel that connection with her spirit and they, they know she's around and she's communicating. And then other times they'll come to us in dreams like my father does. One time I had a dream 
my father came into a dream and he was, he didn't say anything. He doesn't talk much in the dream, but there's a message that always is relayed in some way. And he came to me and, and he passed me a book and I looked at the book and I saw the cover of the book and, but I didn't read, I didn't see what the, the, the name of the book was, but I trusted that, that I would, I would uh, find it or it would come to me in one way. Literally the next day I was at a training weekend and this girl came in she goes oh, I have all these old books that you know I wanted to share with everybody they're free if you just want to take one whatever you feel drawn to and I'm like I need to see those books I went up and I took first one I pulled out was the exact book that my father gave to me in my dream and I didn't know what the title was but I recognized the cover and I told her the story and we both started bawling and feeling that beautiful connection to his spirit and him communicating from beyond and giving me the message that I need. And that book was uh, Pima Chodron. I can't remember the title of the book, but it was actually a beautiful message for me. And it was a perfect book for me at that time. So our, our loved ones have a way of communicating with us. If we're open, if we're curious, if we're willing, then, then they're, they're, our relationship with them will, will continue to, to live on. And that for me brings extraordinary joy. To be able to connect people to loved ones that have passed brings me extraordinary joy because I see the relief and the shift and the, the healing that happens when we have that. I remember one client I had who had done his, I think his mother passed 20 years prior and I did one session with him around his mother and we connected with her and she took place she took position as a guardian angel. She was waiting for permission for years, 20 years, to take position as guardian angel because he, she just couldn't communicate with him. And he was just so caught up in his, his grief that he couldn't even open up to the idea that she was there, present with him. And at the end of the session, he's like, I've done 20 years of counseling and you just helped me heal something that I've been trying for 20 years to heal. And he says, I can't thank you enough. I, I feel such a connection with her. Like it's just, I, I've never felt this in a few years and I'm so grateful. So that joy that he was feeling, that connection was, I was feeling it too. So I was celebrating along with him, but such a beautiful experience. And it's all timely. So we're not going to force this. We're not going to try and make this happen. It, it happens organically, but I just want to open your mind to the possibility of you connecting and, and them sending you signals and staying present with you in some way or another from beyond the physical form. So that's my message for you today. And I just want to honor you and, and recognize that wherever you are in that cycle of grief and loss, just know that you will move through it whatever you're going through, you can grow through. And if it's on your path, it's purposeful and you're honoring as you honor those human experiences and honor those human emotions, you can move through them with more ease and grace. Doesn't mean it's easy peasy. Doesn't mean it's not going to be challenging. And sometimes there's going to be moments that'll take you to your knees. Let them take you to your knees. Let yourself feel it fully and then step up, get yourself back up and continue to take the step that's in front of you. I believe in you. I honor you. I love you. I appreciate you. Until next week, namaste. You've been listening to Life by Divine with your host, Sue DeMay. Shift your consciousness from head to heart and enliven your soul as you discover how to lead with your heart and live your own life by divine. Join Sue in the growing global heart led living community at heartledliving.com. That is heartledliving.com.